The 2020 Ole Miss baseball season will always be one filled with what-ifs. That group raced out to a 16-1 start with a series win over number one, Louisville. And the runner goes, the payoff pitch, swing and a miss, struck him out, throw to second, he's gone, and the Rebels win! But in an instant, a global pandemic ripped away the blossoming season. As the calendar turns to 2021, Another talented roster takes flight towards the sports promised land, Omaha. Hey, you ready, buddy? Let's do it. I just got my brand new cape. Everyone's been doubting Derek, so. No one doubts me. Half the team comes and gets their haircut on me. Freshman Jacob Gonzalez has been named the opening day starting shortstop. And with that role comes the long honored tradition of a sun kissed hairdo. It's very hard to make it look real bad. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> I have a ton of faith. He's pretty good at uh, cutting hair all the time. He's he's done a lot for the team. He does a pretty good job. So it'll be good. It'll be good. <laughs> I remember some great advice my sister Devin told me. She said, "Up, down, sides." I actually kind of forgot it, but I just made sure I got all of it. Yeah. And now I've kind of figured out how to go faster through it. And I've finished going all the way through, but I got some extra products and work. We're bleaching this boy. I want to see it. So I'm going to have to shampoo it and then condition it and then put in this purple stuff, whatever it is. I think you're good, brother. Let's dry it off. I got to get Problem too. Do you? No. Yeah. Not right now. No? <laughs> looking good? Oh, yeah, it is. That's looking good. It's good. I think I All right, just got my hair dyed. Shout out to Derek. Now let's go to Texas. Yes, uh, See you guys. See you, See you, See you Gonzo. Oh, baby. We should do this on the ice. I wouldn't say I'm full panic, panic, panic about slipping on the turf. <laughs> I mean, on the, the warning track. Full panic, panic. But I'm more than mildly concerned. Hey, but we run a 6.85 now. We're good. Yeah, that's the worst part about being an outfielder. Starting BP, you got no one to talk to. You know, back at third and first, there's always either a runner, someone to talk to. We get pictures sent by the warning track, but they don't want to talk. Got Tim's got the rest. <laughs> yeah. What's it? What, wait, what did we call him that one night? The Adonis. Yeah, the Adonis. The, the Adonis. Adonis has the rest he's of got them. what they call in the industry SEC size. He has big league shape. Feel free to ask him about it. He loves being called. He he loves he loves uh, being commented about how big he is. Oh. Uh, really takes pride in it. it inflates his ego. Yeah. As we all know. Yeah. Tim. Tim, huge ego guy. <laughs> oh, heads up. No, you're good, Scoot. We're chilling. We got a chance on this one, too. Hell yeah. Oh, heads up, Scoot. Not a fan of the sand that gets in your mouth after you slide here, though. Not cool. Bring the juice! I was, I was letting it eat there, huh? 
looks pretty solid out there. Yeah, that last round, yeah. I was like, you know what? Yeah, it's practice yeah, day, it's not BP. Uh, we're gonna just let it oh. oh, Mountaintop. It's one of those days where you, you don't wanna leave practice. I mean, this place is awesome. Plus, really flies to right, which is really fun. I know there's so much adrenaline running through your, your, your head, so I just want to share a couple things with you. You know, one is, you know, remember we talked about, you know, last meeting on uh, uh, Thursday night, right, about all that you've been through. And that's what people talk about. And they'll be talking about it for weeks now, until maybe we get to April and you can start figuring out who's really good. But until they figure out who's really good, they want to talk about the emotions and what's it going to feel like after, that's what you're getting, like first question. What did it feel like the first time out there in such a long time? That's you know, going to be what the media take is, right? All that you've been through, all how hard it's been. But gentlemen, it's been hard on everybody. Not the college baseball players, everybody. And not just in this country, but the entire world. And then the last thing that I'll share with you. What's the greatest criticism that a player, an athlete could get? You're not good enough, right? Well, that's not true. I mean, you wouldn't be here and have this uniform if you're not good enough. You didn't play well. That's not the greatest criticism. The greatest criticism is that you were timid. Don't do that. Today, man, go for it. Because of all the questions and the pandemic, you deserve this. You deserve today. You deserve this moment, right? Don't screw it up by being scared. Don't screw it up by being timid. Go for it today. Man, swing, swing today. Go after them immediately, right? And then go enjoy it. Because man, when you're timid, right? You don't only just cheat the fans that came here to watch you. You don't even only cheat yourself. Man, maybe the worst thing is you cheat the game. The game. And that's what it is. It's a game. Go enjoy it today. There is a sea of purple to the right and uh, that blend of light blue and red to the left here. And uh, what a beautiful setting for today's ball game. At the plate now, Ben Van Cleve. Uh, Van Cleve, one of those uh, hitters that could do a lot of damage. The Rebel faithful learned early on the Globe Life Gorilla was anything but timid. Two lined into right center field on the run. Boyers, the right fielder, not going to get there. It hops once against the wall. Graham comes home to score. Bench comes around Let's to go. score. A two-run double for Ben Van Cleve. And Ole Miss leads two to nothing. Van Cleve just puts a great swing on a two-strike fastball out up over the plate. When he gets to second base, he gives that pound of the chest. And uh, uh, I mean, everybody in the dugout's waiting for it because you know he's gonna do it and just fires everybody up. I mean, it was huge. Van Cleef obviously had a bunch of clutch hits that game. I'm pretty sure he ended up getting the uh, shirt at the end of the game. So it was, it was very big. And uh, I don't think that hit could have came at a better time. As we go to the bottom of the second, four nothing, Ole Miss. While the Rebel offense was rolling, an uncharacteristically shaky outing from Doug Nikhazy put its young bullpen to the test. Good pinch and strike three on a swing and a miss. Kimbrell comes up big. Swing and a miss as you get a strikeout from Drew McDaniel. Desperately needing an out in the sixth, Bianco turned to his Texas gunslinger, Taylor Broadway. Well, that was some cheddar up, up high. Yeah, it was. He's really unique in a guy that throws as hard as he does, that he really commands four pitches in the strike zone. Uh, so he can pitch like a starter, but out of the bullpen, uh, you can extend him. You know, in that outing against TCU, probably not by you know, design did we want to throw him four innings. It just kind of laid out that way. And, and just really happy that we got a guy like that, you know, in the back end of our bullpen. Once the native son felt right at home, there was nothing the Horned Frogs could do. Wow. There's a 90 mile an hour fastball. Swung on a foul tipped at the plate and a strikeout for Broadway. Swing and a 
miss. That is strike three, and Ole Miss wins the season opener. Seven to three, Taylor Broadway, four innings of scoreless relief, and Ole Miss has now won 17 straight games. That ties the longest winning streak in school history. Great, great fan base here. Really a goal team, man. Everyone behind me did well, played well. Offense did great, took advantage when we needed it. Let's go win two more. Oh gosh, so they you make sure you're in your room. I, uh, I'm not late. I promise, I'm not late. All right, it's 1027. I don't have my key though, so we'll see how this goes. So every night at curfew, which we set uh, based on when they have to get up the next day, when the game ended, uh, we go around, check on the guys, make sure they're in their room, give them information for the next day, so if they make it to breakfast, uh, know what's going on the next day. So right now we're about to get uh, Luke Baker and Cody Adcock, and uh, check it out. So eat between 7 and 8.30, bring your voucher, uh, team meal, same time as it was yesterday, all that. What's up? Drew's in here. No, he left. He left? Yeah. He told you to say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got you. Lunch is brisket and barbecue. sausage, Sorry. Texas barbecue. Yeah. Um, and then team meeting at 11.55. Then we're gonna beat Texas Tech. We're gonna come back and get Whataburger. Oh, I'm fired up about that. Yeah. Peyton told me they have a good, uh, Honey butter biscuit. They have those good at Chicken on a Stick in um, in Oxford. Yeah, Chevron. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to it. Going to it for the camera. No, nah, you hit a. Home, <laughs> we made a deal. You hit a home run. Hit a home run. Yeah. All right, deal. All right. Uh, it says it look like John Cena. Yeah. Uh, I need to. No, so you can't see me. <laughs> All right. See you guys. Yeah. We'll see you. Plenty of room for activities. Plenty of water. Just immaculate. Immaculate bullpen. I don't know. I mean, it's like the, the best bullpen mount I've ever seen. It's perfect. It's always perfect. It's pretty nice. And uh, we got us these little chairs in here. You know, get real comfy, watch the game. That's nice. And uh, yeah, I mean, on top of the amazing bullpen, we're here. It's beautiful. I love it. When the lights are at their brightest, Junior Gunnar Hoagland doesn't shy away from the biggest of stages. Swing and a miss. 95 mile an hour fastball at the bottom of the strike zone. And that one a swing and a miss. Back to back strikeouts and a good start. Swing and a miss, strike three. Three consecutive strikeouts. But with an electric fastball, one mistake can be dangerous. The 0-1, this ball's lifted well into the deep left center field gap on the run. That ball is gone into the Texas Tech bullpen. You know, nothing phases me out there. Coach B always talks about staying in the moment, and, you know, that's what I'm trying to do out there, stay present and uh, just focus on making a good pitch. With Gunner, you know, the, the sign of maturity is he puts it behind him in a blink of an eye and gets right back to work. The 0-2. Swing and a miss, strike three. So Gunnar Hoagland bounces right back. With an offense like the Wolfpack, it was only a matter of time before they punched back. Two out, runner at third. Texas Tech leading two to nothing over Ole Miss. Gonzalez struck out looking his first time up. I had two strikes, so I was just trying not to strike out. He's kind of just like the cool, calm, collected presence that uh, came in and just knew he was good from the get-go. 2-2 Two -two pitch, line to right field. Get over his head. Baker, he is not going to get there, and it is gone. Let's go! Jacob Gonzalez, first career home run, and Ole Miss evens the score at two. No moment is too big for him. He's a pretty special player to watch, and it definitely showed you on the biggest, one of the biggest stages. 0-1 to the Rebel third baseman, Tim Elko. He hits this one pretty well to deep center. Noisy on the run, gets to the warning track, and has it bounce off of his glove. And Elko will cruise into second base. Let's go! Let's go! Ole Miss has something going here. Now Hayden Dunhurst at the plate. That's in the right field, a base hit, and Ole Miss about to go on top. Let's go! And Ole Miss takes a 3-2 lead on an RBI single from Hayden Dunhurst. We have a good one here. We're only in the third inning. 
This ball hits sharply to third, a one hopper off the glove of the first baseman. The throw was off the mark by Conley. Run comes home to score. Ben Van Cleef trying to go all the way to third. Head first slide, and he is safe. And you get the half hard and chest beat that time. Oh. Big man may have been out of gas at that point. Runner on third. This ball hit into right field. Dying fast. It's a base hit. An RBI single for Hayden Leatherwood, and Ole Miss has scored five, and the Rebels lead it by three. The Ole Miss lead held strong into the ninth, but after witnessing the Rebel gun show, the Red Raiders hope to sling together one of their own. Swing and a miss, a big strikeout from Max Chofi. He gets Rom back to chase one out of the zone. Two more, baby, let's go. For the first out, the all-important first out in the ninth. Texas Tech has to have a base runner to give themselves a chance. They trail by two, five to three in the top of the ninth, the three-one. That's not what Chofi wanted to do there, put the tying run at the plate. Ground ball, ground ball right here. Good pitch by Chofi again, waved at him, missed at 91. And Ole Miss one out away from a victory, three and two. He walked him. So Max Chofi is done. Up the middle, that's a base hit. Coming home to score is Fulford. It's five to four. Stopping at second is Baker. And Baker will give way to Brayton Forsyth. Full count. Three balls, two strikes. Runners on second and third in a one run game. Forsyth delivers outside. Ball four. Bases loaded. What a game. Two balls, two strikes. Two outs. Bases loaded. Top of the ninth. Ole Miss leading by one, five to four. From the windup, the pitch missed for ball three. Full count with the bases loaded, bottom of the ninth, a one-run game. Tech trying to pull it out, as is Ole Miss with the lead. Baker at third, Conley at second, Noisy at first. There go the runners. Ball lifted to right field, hit well, but not well enough. Camp Thunder it is Kate Salmon. I told you, baby. <laughs> Dude, we were talking about it. Are you kidding yeah. me? Hell of a job today, boys. Yeah. Let's go, one, three, two, one. Yes. Let's go. Yeah, the first day I went, arm sleeve on the right, wristband on the left, over three, three strikeouts, took off the sleeves, took off the wristband, and I got two hits. And then yesterday I went nothing, and I didn't get any hits. And then, uh, so today I'm just going to go, uh, what's it called? Sleeve on the left instead of on the right. So we're going to try to change up the, the juju a little bit. You, you know what happens when you reach in the swag bag. You get out of the swag bag. We need you. Needing one more win for a Lone Star sweep, the eyes of Texas shined up on one of its own. All the live long day. And awaits the 1 0. And he hits this one sharply down the third baseline, past the diving Williams at third. Shot yeah, going to try to turn it into extra bases. He'll go into second base standing up. It's a leadoff double on a 1 0 pitch on a ball that was right out over the heart of the plate. Fly ball into left field. That's plenty deep to get the run home. Kennedy will make the catch just a step shy of the warning track and will lob it back in as Shot yeah, jogs home, steps on the plate. All right. It's right there. Hi boy, son. Hi boy. I told you. I told you. And there he goes again. That one off to the third baseman, Williams. Shot A with that speed. He will be in there sliding. Two of the four hits in the game for Ole Miss are doubles by Peyton Chatagnier. 1-1. One, one. Graham lines this one up the middle into center field. That's a base hit. Chatagnier hits the bag at third. He'll come around to score without a throw, and Ole Miss retakes the lead. Two to one on an RBI single Let's by go! Kevin Graham. He plays with a passion. Like it, it, it's it's real how much he cares, how much he invests, um, how much joy he gets out of playing. And I think whenever you see somebody do that and do that at a high level, it, it obviously has an impact on the people around them. So, you know, certainly uh, that's the, the unique thing about Peyton. I think he makes the people around him better. I want you to hit this thing. I want you to hit, fine, we'll go up the middle. I want you to hit that little garage thingy out there where they hold all the stuff. That's probably four, 
420, 415. Let's go. Pitch lined into center field. Get down, get down, it does. Graham comes around to score. Elko comes around to score. And safe at third is Hayden Leatherwood. It's a two-run single. Big time for the first hit of the year for Justin Bench. And Ole Miss leads 5-1. to one. While the Wolfpack was hard at work, the doctor's office locked down for an extended weekend. Now called upon by Mike Bianco. He says, you know, he could be a real workhorse pitcher for us this season, which is important when you get to Sunday. And if you've got a bullpen that may be drained, you need that starter to go seven, eight innings for you. And Derek Diamond certainly fits that, that prototype. One-two pitch. Strike three called. Antico goes away looking. Swing and a miss. Long swing there for Melendez, and he goes down swinging. That's the second strikeout here in the first inning by Derek Diamond. The one-two. Let's go! Let's go! And a boy two! Keep it going, keep it going, keep it going, keep it you know, going. Honestly, what I came here to do is win games and dominate. So I'm not going to change any mentality. I'm not going to be like, Oh, I'm the Sunday guy, I should throw the third best. You know, I'm going to try to go out and be the best guy on the team every time. Ahead of the count, 0-2. Here it is. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Faltini goes down swinging. And Diamond plays the role of Houdini. The pitch. Swing and a miss. There it is. The strikeout show continues for Derek Diamond. Here's the pitch. Ground ball right side. Gobbled up by Chatagnier over to LaFleur, and that ends the inning. And if that is the end of the game for Derek Diamond, what a day it was. I had to close the office this Monday, too. I told Dunhurst uh, Friday it would be closed on Monday. And uh, sorry to my patience, but I'll be back tomorrow. Uh, the season. We just let the hair fall on the floor. Where else is it? Jackson's torso. That's awesome. I literally turned around right. and I was like, oh, there I am. <laughs> Are we just acting like we're talking? Or? I haven't said anything. Well, I know, but you went like this. I was pulling my mask out. Oh. I wasn't even acting. You were the one acting. <laughs>